Hey, hey, welcome back. It is the last project in connecting with code uh, for this year. So the last Scratch project, there are only four. Normally there's five. It's just that they're bigger. So we decided to just do four. Uh, and so we'll let, uh, let Bob uh, tell us about theme for today. Yeah, continuing with our sustainable development goals or sustainability as our overarching theme. Uh, today we are going to concentrate on life on land. Uh, specifically, we're going to make a project that focuses on butterflies. Butterflies are important to the ecosystem, to the environment, because they're great pollinators. Uh, you probably are familiar with bees being pollinators, making honey and doing all sorts of great things, but butterflies also do that job for us. So uh, keeping butterfly populations preserved is an important thing for our environment. So we're going to make a program that tries to allow us to keep lots of butterflies alive and protect them from things that might make them go away. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. So, uh, yeah, uh, as Bob said, the uh, the theme for today is the butterfly population growth. Uh, is kind of the uh, the theme we've got going on. Uh, let's take a, a look at the solution. So I'm going to click on this and uh, take a look at the solution and see if we can figure out what's going on. So uh, our game is a little bit of a math game. So for people that, that enjoy math, uh, there's these numbers that come down. Uh, and what happens with these numbers is you can increase uh, or potentially decrease uh, your butterfly population growth. And your job is to move your butterfly to try to finish with the most butterflies you can. So that was going fast, so I'll do it again. But I got 80 that time. That was pretty good. So here you go. Watch watch the math now. So when I start, I start with 10. Uh, I'm going to choose to, I would try to do minus 8. Uh, and then times two, I'm just going to watch it, plus four. Oh, I'm going to hit zero and lose here. You lose. That was terrible. <laughs> four butterflies. All right, so you get to choose which one you take, and sometimes you're just choosing, like, which one is the worst out of the bad options. So obviously green one, I want to do green. Uh, so greens are always good and reds are always bad. Um, but sometimes you just got to pick, all right, which would be worse, minus two or minus, minus four? four? Minus four. Uh, which would be worse, minus four. Well, obviously the plus four, that was easier. Uh, so I got 21 that time. So you, you see the idea and you play for uh, some number of seconds. So actually at the start, divided by two is better. It's not great, but it's still better. Divided by two is, oh, I'm going to lose no matter what. I was doomed. That was some bad weather, right? All right. So you yeah, kind of set up the game, uh, to, as you can see, you <laughs> set up the game to last for 20 seconds. Uh, you, you were going to see how to do that in the code. And if you decide to make a longer game, you can. Um, but you can also see how we set it up to randomly pick from these sets of images. And as Dave found in the, the game a few uh, seconds ago, that you can have yes. a very, very bad streak or conversely, very, very good <laughs> you streak. Get a lot of 400, 452 that time, Bob. Take that. There you go. So that's, that's your range, <laughs> losing in about eight seconds or uh, 452 <laughs> in about 20 seconds. So it'll be one of the first times that we've done like a timer based game too. And that's a, that's a popular thing with, uh, with games. So, uh, we're going to learn a lot, uh, in this project. Uh, we're going to learn about, uh, functions, like, uh, how to handle hits, costumes, variables, uh, all kinds of good stuff. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Uh, so go ahead and fire up, uh, scratch. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to click on, uh, create. Uh, so we'll start off with our, uh, blank bank slate here uh, and right now we've got our cat uh, which is great there's no cats in this game uh, so I'm gonna get rid of the cat uh, and then we're gonna start picking some of our sprites to go in here so for me my theme is is butterfly population growth I'm trying to grow butterflies I'm I'm gonna build mine exactly like the solution but but know that you're allowed to make changes if you want so I'm gonna add a new sprite here uh, and of course I'm gonna look for uh, my butterfly. I guess there's a couple of butterflies. You can pick whichever one you prefer. Uh, I'll just pick the same one as the solution here. And so my butterfly is going to be flying around. Uh, he could be flying around in a white screen. That would be fine. But I think that I'm going to put some sort of backdrop on him. Now, last time I put, um, I put, I typed in sky whenever I made this. There's blue sky. If you kind of want to make it look like he's flying through the sky. Uh, or what I did is I just picked this one. You can pick any background you want. I, no, no strong preference. So feel free to make yours uh, whatever you would like. 
Now, the way this game works is different from a lot of games. Uh, if you come over and look at the solution again, I need to make it to where I can pop over that faster. Um, the butterfly doesn't move uh, anywhere. He moves either in this spot uh, or he moves in that spot. So the butterfly actually just has two places uh, that he's potentially at. So that's a little bit of a different movement strategy uh, than we've used in the past. So you've got to decide what are the two spots that you want him to move between. So you want him to move from somewhere over here. And so I'm just going to kind of like hold him over here. So this looks like, I don't know, around negative 100 uh, to somewhere over here. Uh, it looks like positive 100. Um, I think in my solution, I use like negative 120 and positive 120. It doesn't really matter, but we want to have kind of like two spots uh, that, that the butterfly is going to kind of hop between. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by saying uh, when green flag clicked. Probably saw that one coming. Uh, and I'm going to start off moving the butterfly to a, to a fixed spot, either the one on the left or the right. I think I'll do uh, the one on the left. So I'm going to say motion. Go to, um, and I'm going to start him at negative 120. That looks good. Um, and then as far as his height goes, it's a little bit variable. I'm going to just follow uh, what my what my solution over here did. Uh, and it looks like that it did negative 100. So it doesn't really matter, uh, but I'm just going to make mine the exact same uh, as what I did when we built it. Another thing you could choose to do is you can make your butterfly nice and big. Uh, right now he's 100. Uh, if you would like to make him smaller, uh, you can. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't really affect the game. You can make him whatever size you're you're happy with. And the main thing we want to do in this game is our butterfly has to move uh, between the two tracks using the uh, the arrow keys. Uh, there's two solutions for doing that. You could, uh, just to kind of make you think about this, you could do it with when uh, a key is pressed. So you could do it this way, uh, left and right arrows. That approach works fine so long as it's not continuous motion. It's just like you just want to do it one time and that'd be fine. Your other approach you could do it is you could put in a forever loop and you could say if, um, and then you could put in uh, the key pressed uh, of a certain thing. Uh, so I'm going to let Bob pick which one we go with. Bob, do you feel like using the events approach or the forever if statement approach? Either one works in this game. Actually, tell me when when you have to, when would you have to use one or the other, and which one do you feel like using this time, Bob? Ooh, when would you have to use one or the other? I'd have to think yeah. about that. Um, so what I, my answer was going to be, let's do the one that we haven't done yet, and I was trouble, I was struggling to recall uh, <laughs> what we'd actually used in our other games, and when we had that choice. Um, so you're deciding between a forever loop that will check with an if versus a when blank press. So the when blank pressed uh, is basically setting up a forever outside of the code, mm -hmm. right? And the forever loop that you have here, yeah, so if we were going to do more stuff beyond this forever loop, we'd want this to be happening in the background. So I think it really depends on, on how much was going on with this sprite. Um, we wouldn't want to lock it down in a forever loop if we wanted to do things after this. So uh, I think the win is probably the smarter choice. See, like the win. It, 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 like I say, this time it works out to where you can do either. The, the way I think about it is the win, like if you press a key and you hold it for like three seconds, the win just fires, uh, I think it fires just once when you first press it. Um, but then the if, like as you hold it down and then you let off, it like moves continuously, right? So actually, I think that the, the most elegant one for this app is, in fact, the win. Uh, so I like that. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that choice. And so what we want to do on uh, the win here is when it's left arrow, we want him to hop to this side. So I'm going to grab a go to negative 120, negative 100. And then uh, because I've coded uh, quite a bit in Scratch, I'm going to duplicate, right? So duplicate's a way to do things faster. And then the right arrow is going to go to... Uh, positive 120. And I did that kind of quick, and uh, if it takes you a little bit longer to, to see it and make it happen, that's fine. Uh, but you should be able to uh, make yours match mine. You should be able to do a left arrow uh, or a right arrow, and it should just hop back and forth between the two. Cool. Pretty good. Now, to be perfectly honest, this go-to here isn't truly necessary. It's just if you're somehow starting in a weird spot, it'll fix it, and it'll make sure you always start uh, on the left. 
So to be honest, I'm uh, happy enough with the butterfly. I think what I actually want to do is I want to start making those those multipliers or dividers or things that fall. Um, and those, if you look at them, those actually are just drawn. So they're just they're just all drawn. So there's actually going to be five different costumes that we draw. Um, and then we're going to uh, just like put words and stuff on them. So usually when we add a new sprite, I'm going to have to move Bob and I here. Usually we just click on this circle, right? We just click on it. We just say, great. Uh, sometimes what you can do is you can upload images from the internet. Uh, that can be, that can be fun. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do. You can go get yourself a butterfly from the internet. Uh, other times, uh, you can see these others. This is a surprise. It just picks one for you. Uh, or paint, uh, or choose a sprite. That's actually the same as clicking on the button here. We're going to actually pick paint. Now what paint does is paint just gives you a blank canvas uh, to where there's nothing there. You're going to be responsible for painting, right? And so that's what I chose to do to start. Now, to be honest, if you wanted to uh, have some custom image in there and then you put numbers on it, that'd be fine too. Uh, but I just wanted to get people comfortable with drawing. All right, so I'm going to draw a circle. Uh, so I'm going to click on a circle here. Now a circle, if you start to drag it out, uh, can actually be like an oval, uh, you know, this way or this way. But we want a perfect circle. Now you can you can try to get it perfect. Uh, but another really good trick is to hold down the shift key. And if you hold down the shift key, it forces it to be a perfect circle, which is kind of cool. Uh, so I'm going to make it an ad ah, about yay big. Doesn't really matter. Uh, and then I'm going to move it. See how there's like the middle of the circle and then there's the middle of the screen. I'm going to move it to where it's right on it. Boom. And it kind of locks in when you get there. Now you can see that it's currently a little big. Not worried about that. I usually, whenever I draw, I just draw big. And then if I want to make it smaller, I adjust the size over here. So I can always uh, adjust the size uh, of it over there. Maybe 50% would be a good compromise for me. Now this particular one is bad, in my opinion. And so I want it to be red. Now I drew it and then I let off of it. So you can see it's not selected anymore. Uh, this little arrow uh, right there, that'll help you select an item. And then you can edit that item. And that ability to edit uh, is really nice. Uh, so let's change the color to uh, to red. There you go. That looks like a pretty uh, pretty vicious red. And you can do things whatever you're happy with, right? Uh, and I'm going to add some text. Uh, so Bob, I think that I'm going to pick the um, I'm going to call this one my divided by two. Divided by two. Oh, can't see it. It's because it's it's red on red. And you're going to pick what terrible event happened. Uh, to cause our butterfly population uh, to divide by two. I just realized that symbol for divide by two, that's uh, that's what I typically use for divide by two. Is there actually like a divide symbol on the, the keyboard somewhere? Uh, so I don't remember exactly how we did this, um, but in our solution, we have a divided by symbol with the dot, the line, and the dot. It actually looks yeah. like one might find it. So I'm guessing that we constructed that. And just for consistency, uh, I'll go ahead and share what we used as our butterfly enemy for each of these. Uh, this was just a matter of Dave and I having some fun on uh, Google and learning a little bit about uh, butterflies and what their natural enemies are and what they try to avoid and uh, things that butterflies like for our, our positive um, circles that are going to fall. So for Divided by two, we actually said that divided by two was going to be a bird. I don't know if birds necessarily attack butterflies, <laughs> but if you have a massive uh, swarm, is it a swarm? A uh, group of butterflies that are flying and a bird comes along, we figured that could take out some butterflies and that might not be good. So um, we went ahead and chose bird to be our divided by two when we made our solution. Sounds good. Now I'm working pretty quickly here and I'm not necessarily explaining uh, because to be honest, the best way to learn how to do something is, is just to play with it for a while, right? So you can see the goal. Uh, we're trying to, to type on, um, uh, I had to actually, I, I just painted a little divide by symbol in here. Um, and then I added a bird up here. But the, the tricks that you need to know is you need to know that you can click on text, you can click on circles, and then if you want to edit something, you click on the, the little select item, uh, and then you can edit it. People always ask me how to... Sorry, go ahead. 
No, 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 no. Finish up. I said people always ask me how to make the text bigger. You just drag the rectangle bigger, right? So you just make it about as big as you want. Is there a fancy way to align? So if I'm being super, like my eyes notice that your dot's a little off from that other dot, is there a way to grab both of them and say to align? Or do you just have to... No, I guess if you if you grab them both, you can kind of see if they're off, though. So you can... Uh, That's true. You can use it. You can also use the arrow keys to kind of move things like little bitty amounts and things like that. Yeah. By the way, the other thing I'll say is uh, my my keyboard didn't have a good divide by symbol. Uh, but here's a trick you can uh, actually do on the internet. Uh, there's many different things that you could um, put onto like just like a key, but you don't have a good way to type them. Uh, and so what I did is I, I looked up the, the word like divide by Unicode. And then if you uh, find something like that, uh, then you could actually like paste it uh, in there. And that actually uh, does work as well. That actually looks way better than, than my little draw and divide by. Uh, but I am fine with whatever solution you want to use, right? So if you want to just put the divide by that, that is on your keyboard, um, I also call that forward slash, that's fine. Um, if you want to go get the Unicode divide by, uh, feel free to do that uh, or, or whatever you want, draw it. So, all right, does that look pretty good? Looks great. Cool. And so after I make something once, uh, I probably am going to try not to reinvent the wheel. I'm probably going to duplicate it. So I've got one here. So now I'm going to right click on it and say duplicate. And then I'm going to modify it for the next one. I think the next thing we did was probably a minus four. Uh, and Bob, what would you like the minus four to, uh, to be the result of? Well, in our original game, we said that wasps were uh, wasp. enemies of butterflies. So we made the wasp the minus four. I think we just said wasp. We, we kept the thing singular. Right, singular. So bird, wasp. A very evil butterfly killing wasp. Excellent. Exactly. Oh, but it wasn't four, though. It was probably minus eight. Did we have a minus eight? We did have a minus eight. And the minus eight was a spider web. <laughs> spider web. All right, hold on. I'm going to duplicate wasp. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to this one and change it to be uh, spider web. And you can see, of course, that that one is uh, too big. Uh, so you've got a couple options. You can go with two lines if you wanted to go on two lines. And don't know if there's a good way to center it. Uh, you could artificially put the space in front of the W, maybe. Genius. Manual centering. <laughs> Cool. I think that, that is just your uh, your enemy and your number are slightly different colors. Was that intentional? Was not, it grayer? It, it was it just it, a design option. It was not intentional, uh, but I actually kind of liked it. <laughs> so I was like, but I was I was messing with the colors uh, accidentally, uh, and I switched it to be gray number and white on top, uh, and then I was like, ooh, that was a happy accident, uh, and so I decided to leave it right there. Uh, by the way, we've got these ordered by like the thing that's usually the worst. Usually dividing your whole population by eight or by two is worse actually than minus eight because hopefully you'll have a big population someday. So to keep them straight in our head, we, we've got them from like worst to, to best, right? Uh, so now we're getting ready to make the transition uh, from, um, from bad to good. So we're going to have a plus four. Now, of course, what I want to do is I want to click on my select tool here and I want to select my circle. And I'm going to pick a green. That looks like a pretty good green. Uh, what was our plus four that we got? Our plus four, we were thinking about things that butterflies like. Our plus four was milkweed. Milkweed. Uh, this is specific to the monarch butterfly. We've got quite a bit of milkweed in our backyard here. Uh, and I... Uh, I recommend if you can plant some milkweed. It's fun to see yeah. the monarchs and um, oh, this little known fact: it's actually good to catch monarch caterpillars. I didn't know this, um, and actually to to bring them into your home uh, and let them become a butterfly in your home and then release them because there's fewer things that'll get them in your home. But you have to feed the caterpillar like a milkweed a day. But it's it's fun to do. Uh, so we we probably have. I don't know, 20 butterflies a season uh, that we, we have 
uh, become butterflies in our home, and the kids love it, right? So it's always. And fun. how do you find the caterpillars? Oh, uh, so, the... so 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 step number one is to plant a milkweed garden. So we've got it's not big, but it's like a I don't know two foot by eight foot area. This is just a whole milkweed. Milkweed's a weed, so it grows just fine, right? Uh, so you, you buy a little milkweed, and then and it it, it reseeds itself every year. So we, we planted it many years ago. Uh, but when, then we go out and we just look for caterpillars on the milkweed, uh, okay. and uh, it's fun. All right, back back yeah, to what we're doing. My wife did the uh, same thing. We have uh, three or four milkweed planted in our yes. corner. Nice. With the sole purpose of hoping to attract butterflies. Yes. Save those monarchs. All right. What um, what was our times two? Or? Uh, our times two was nectar. Nectar. Is that you are or you are? A R N E C T A R. Sounds yeah. like you are or E R, but it is A R. Nectar with a R. <laughs> Nectar. All right. So sometimes drawing, uh, I spend like half my time with drawing, but I think that that's good. Um, you get um, you get better at drawing, and uh, and your stuff your stuff just looks better, right? If you can if you can draw, I think I think what we just made here, Bob, I think it looks better than the solution. I think the solution is lame compared to the quality of our images here. Yeah, I was looking at, uh, <laughs> at least on my version of the solution, the text was quite small, and yeah, this uh, yeah I, I like the improvements. Way better. They're they're giant. I guess if I want to change the size, I can just change the size. I think they're a little too big to have multiple on the screen, right. so I, I think we're going to be playing with that probably as we get further into the game flow, but uh, as far down as 40. the design goes, I like it. Cool. All right. I suppose we should write some code, though. Uh, so yeah. this thing, obviously, we're going to use clones, right? Because there's a bunch of different costumes here, so there's going to be some some stuff going on with clones. I uh, usually when I do stuff with clones, I think about two things. I think about the the person that makes the clones, which is usually when green flag clicked, and then all the clone stuff. This is in the bottom of control when I start as a clone. So these are kind of like my two my two worlds. So making them and starting as them. Now sometimes uh, you need somebody else to make you. Uh, but sometimes you can just make yourself. So we're just gonna we're gonna make ourselves, and it's gonna work out fine this time. And usually, what I like to do, we talked about this last time, is I hide the original, uh, and I show the clones. Uh, and the reason for that is that the original's right here, and actually, it's just easier just to hide him because he's only gonna ever be one. But the clones, there's gonna be many of them, right? All right. So I'm gonna need to uh, always make if we kind of look at the solution here. Uh, I'm going to need to always make two. One is over on the left, the other is over on the right. So I'm always making two, uh, and then they're going to fall. So there's a couple of hard things uh, to figure out how to do here. So uh, when green flag clicked, I want to do something forever. And I'm going to do it wrong at first, but I'm just going to say, like, uh, create clone of myself, create clone of myself. So if I just make two... Uh, well, they're going to be right on top of each other, right? And what we've done in the past is we've randomly picked their position so that they're not right on top of each other. But that, that actually won't work this time because we want one specifically here and we want the other specifically here. And so there's a couple of different ways, I'm sure, to solve this. Uh, but the way that I thought of is uh, let's, let's make a variable, right? So we'll have a, a variable that says, like, where it's supposed to go, and we'll set it to, like, um, negative 120 or, or positive 120. And so uh, let's go ahead and give this a go. So I want a variable. So I'm going to go to variables. And I'm going to set, uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and make a variable. So I'm going to click on make a variable. And I'm going to call it uh, starting x. Seems like a good name. Uh, I could have it be for all sprites or for this sprite only. It genuinely does not matter. Uh, my rule of thumb is, well, usually I just always use for all sprites, right? So that is totally fine. Um, just to prove that it doesn't matter, uh, I'm going to click on for this sprite only. So nobody else will see this variable except for me, uh, and it won't actually matter. So I'm going to hit OK. Now, if I regret that, uh, if we get building a bob and it goes badly, uh, that's something I might uh, regret. Now, you can see why I rarely pick this option, because up here, when you show it, it says Sprite 1 starting X, and it's kind of an ugly label. Now, it turns out that the reason I did it is because I'm not going to show it anyway. Uh, it's kind of like a hidden internal variable that I use. So what I want to do is, in one case, I want to set the starting variable to negative 120. 
uh, and then I want to uh, make one and then I'm going to set it uh, to positive 120. Now in theory this works uh, just fine, uh, but when we run it we're going to be surprised. Uh, and I'm just going to let us, uh, I'm going to let us run into it, so it'd be good. Alright, so when I start as a clone, I want to show, showing is showing's good. I also want to move to um, a certain spot. And actually I, I prefer to move there before I show, that's just my preference. And where I'm going to move to is I'm going to move to the starting X. And then I'm going to move to the Y that's just somewhere near the top, right? So the top, if I just kind of like move it up here and see, positive 174 is pretty close to the top. I bet I could just do 180. So 180 is the official top. Now if I run this, oh sure enough it worked for me this time, Bob. Um, if I run this, what I was expecting to see happen is I was expecting only one of them to show up. Uh, but it actually worked out fine. So... Um, Oh well, my, my, my plan backfired on me. I was expecting them to both be on the left, uh, which is, which is weird. Um, oh, let me try one more thing. Let's put a weight in here of two seconds. Maybe this will, maybe this will break it. Nope, it just works no matter what. I was expecting it to break. Um, so maybe yours broke. Maybe, maybe something went wrong for you. Um, but I, I ran into a bug whenever we tested this to where uh, if we made it negative 120 and we made one, then we changed it like one microsecond later, it messed up, right? So I got this weird glitch. Um, the way that I fixed it, if you had that same bug, is I put in a uh, just like a, a very, very little weight uh, between them. So if you have the problem, which I'm not currently having, uh, adding a little weight there can be good. All right, so... Yeah, and depending on how old you are and what numbers you've seen, uh, he added a lot of zeros there. Usually when we add a lot of zeros to a number, it actually makes it bigger. There's a little decimal point there. And so the more zeros you put after a decimal point before you put other numbers, the smaller it gets. So he put a really, really small number in there. Thanks, Bob. I, I appreciate it. I was still razzled by the fact that it didn't work the way I was expecting. Yeah, and you know, just to explain <laughs> what uh, what we saw when we did this before, he, he mentioned this kind of race that was going on that that second starting x to 120 would get applied to the first clone and then it would clone it again right on top of itself and so it's kind of this this weird thing that uh i guess happens sometimes uh depending on other things that are going on with the code but we're not seeing it here but you might be and so that's why we recommend you put that weight in there Cool. All right. So, uh, cruising on. So right now I'm making them. Um, they're just hanging out at the top there. Uh, so that, that's something. Um, but what I want to do is I want to randomly pick a costume and I also want them to, to fall, right? Uh, let's randomly pick a costume first. So I'm going to go into looks. I'm going to switch costume to, and I'm going to do this before the showing as well. Uh, we've actually done this trick before. I want to randomly pick a costume. Uh, so I'm going to go into operators, pick random, and I'm, I'm aware I'm going too fast, right? So I, I apologize for that. Um, but uh, again, just, just pause it as you need. I'm just going to kind of like run away with things here. So I'm going to switch costume to pick random 1 to 10. Well, I want to see how many costumes I've got. So you can see I've got costume 1, the numbers right here, 2, 3, four and five. So I want to switch between one to five. Uh, and I could run that and you can see that every two seconds it should switch uh, to a different costume. Maybe, sometimes it'll stay put. Uh, and then the next thing I want to do is I want them to start falling. So I'm going to go ahead and add some code to start falling. So I'm going to need a forever loop down here. And the thing I want them to do is I want them to fall down. Uh, so if I go into motion, you could potentially use the move command, but then you'd have to be like pointing the right way. I much prefer change Y by. Now, the last time I did this, uh, well, what program were we doing? I made them go up. Yeah, we were like trying to catch trash and I, I put in a speed here of two. Um, if I put in a speed of two, they're gonna move up. I've done that, I've made that mistake before. Uh, so I'm going to try a minus two this time. Uh, and so now they should start, uh, they should start falling, which is kind of cool. 
Now you can decide how you want your game to work. Uh, you can make them pretty tightly packed the way uh, ours are here. Like we want, we want people to have to make like split second reactions and, and to go places. Um, I think that's, uh, that, that's probably going to be fun. And so you can see that right now, uh, my butterfly is right under him. Uh, so it's going to either catch it, uh, or it's going to disappear. Now you do have to be a little careful here because if you catch one, you want the other one to disappear. And so we're just going to use their height to do this. And so if you get touched by the butterfly, then, then you got collected. Um, or if you get to a certain height, uh, you disappear. So those are the two ways that, that you could go off. Uh, so let's go into control. So I am one of these little bubbles and I want two if statements. One for I got caught by the butterfly and then the other is uh, I got low enough to where I just disappeared, right? So let's do caught by the butterfly first. And so uh, sensing, touching mouse pointer. I'm gonna switch that to if I am touching the butterfly. So if I'm touching the butterfly, what I want to do is I want to score some points. Um, and so we'll have to figure out how we want to score points uh, here in a little bit. Uh, and then the other way that I could go off is uh, I could actually just get below some certain point. So I want to put like if my um, Y is below something. Here's a good below one. So if my Y is less than some number. Now, what we've got to do here is we've got to figure out, uh, well, first off, we've got to figure out how to get a Y that's in motion near the bottom Y position. Now, the next thing we've got to do is we've got to figure out what is this number. Now, to do this, I'm going to make him visible again and just try to figure it out. So, if I'm touching the butterfly, um, I'm going to touch him at around, looks like in my code, I'm going to probably touch him around 27. So if negative, I, negative 27, thank you, Bob. Um, so if I am over here and I get to like 27, then I just want to disappear, right? Because I am I I have like my little window where I can touch the butterfly and then shortly after that, I, I disappear. So maybe if I'm less than, I'm going to go with negative 30. Now, now I have to remember in the actual game, we've got two falling. So if the butterfly is over here and it touches one, it's inconsistent with the way that the game is intended to play to be able to go over and touch the one that's over there. Like yeah. you shouldn't be able to do that. So you need to be able to have the one on the right disappear, you know, when it, when it gets to that same level. But of course, if you make it disappear just a few pixels too high, then the butterfly won't ever be able to catch anybody. Then it'll uh, never get to you. Exactly. <laughs> um, cool. So I think what I want to do is I've got my two if statements. What I want to do is I want to have a variable. Um, so what I'm going to do initially is I'm just going to increment it by one just to show that I'm hitting and just to show that that works. And then I'll start doing this crazy math multiplication stuff. All right. So first we need a variable. So I'm going to make a new variable. Now this one is going to be visible on the screen. So I definitely want to do for all sprites because it'll be nice and clean. Uh, and I'm going to call it uh, just butterflies. And so butterflies um, is going to start at zero, and I'll probably set it to zero over in, in the other sprite. Um, but whenever we touch a circle, we're eventually going to want to do a math operation. But for now, uh, just as a test, we're going to change butterflies by one. After we uh, register that, then we want to delete this clone. So all the clone stuff is in control, uh, and it's at the bottom, so we want to... Make sure you put it in the right spot. We want to delete the clone after he's incremented that. And then also, this is kind of fun, we, in the other case, all we want to do is delete the clone. So one of them should increase butterflies, and then the other should just go away. So this is just a test. So if I'm sitting right here, uh, I can see that they disappear at roughly the same time. Now you can tweak it if it bothers you. If you look really, really closely, this one disappears just a moment after, right? So disappear, 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 disappear. So you could tweak that number uh, 30. I'm just not that worried about it. Now, what you can also do is you could potentially catch two uh, if you're if you're like really good. So if you like get it right there. So I'm at 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And so if that bothers you, 19, 20, 21, um, you can make it a little tighter, right? 
Um, and so I think if you if you wanted to make it a little tighter, I'm just going to show that it could. Um, you could make it so it probably hit right there uh, at negative 22. So I probably could have changed this to like negative 25. Um, and now it's harder to uh, to actually catch them both. Uh, cool. I think I'm good enough with that. That feels like it's about the same time. It'd be it'd be difficult to catch them both. Uh, and you know what? Most users won't even really notice that you could potentially catch them both. All right. And I think it's important that whoever's watching this realize that if you made any different decisions along the way, if your circle was slightly bigger, if yeah. the size that you're using for your butterfly was slightly different, your numbers are going to be different. If your yeah. starting point for the butterfly was different, so you should not just use the negative 30 or the negative 25 that Dave used. Yeah, you should you like... need to go in and do what he did, grab the, the circle, bring it down, see when it touches, and then just go a little bit past that. Yeah. And like Dave did, test your code and make sure you're happy with the way it's running. But the, the, the chances of yours being exactly negative 25 here slim to none. are yeah. pretty <laughs> slim unless you did everything exactly yeah. the same way that, that Dave did. That was, that was a very, very, very good point, yeah. So so I just I saw where it would have hit it. So negative negative 23, and then by the time I get down to negative 25, it's definitely hit. Uh, so I just said, said that. So actually, I probably could change mine to negative 23 even if I wanted to be like really, really... Uh, hardcore. So there, I just want to make sure that it actually works. Uh, yeah, cool. So it seems like, uh, and that's really threading the needle. And there's almost no way somebody could cheat my game now, right? Cool, great. Now you can see that we're just incrementing the number. Um, and in fact, if I play again, it just continues to increment. And the reason I let that go is because we're going to do a lot more uh, than, than just that. So we're going to actually like do a whole math formula. So here's what I want to do. I want to start it at 10. That's just a number we picked. And I personally, I'm going to start it over in the butterflies code. I, I could start it here. That would be okay. Uh, but I'm going to choose to do this over in the butterflies code because I happen to know that the butterfly is going to check to see if like you ever get zero butterflies. And there's this weird thing that can happen. Like if you, if you set it in one place, but then it checks it somewhere else, um, it could check it before it even ever set it. But I'm going to put it in the butterfly, and the reason is the butterfly is going to be the one that checks to see if it see what the value is. And so it actually works out better if he's the same code uh, that does the setting. Then you can guarantee the order they run in. Does that make sense? All right, I think we saw that some uh, last time as well. All right, so the butterfly is going to set it to 10. And then over here, instead of changing it by 1, I actually want to get rid of that. This is one thing that's annoying about Scratch, but it's hard to get rid of just that one line because you can see it kind of like brought them both over here. I actually want to put the delete back. And what I want to do right here, like right where I took that out from, uh, is a lot of stuff, right? So I want to see what costume it is, and then there's five different options, and then for each one I do something slightly different. It's actually going to be a lot of code. Um, and I could just stuff it all in here. That's fine. That, that You're allowed to do that. You're allowed to stuff it all in here. But I think the better thing to do would be to make a function and Scratch calls them blocks. So go ahead and click on make a block. All right. So for make a block, uh, we have to name this uh, function. Now what, what this function is going to do is it's going to handle uh, like when there's a hit, right? So when the butterfly hits a balloon. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my function handle hit. This is the first time that we've, we've done uh, functions. They're kind of fun. You can see that you can add inputs to functions and, and, and all sorts of crazy stuff. Not worried about any of that. We're just going to type in the word handle hit, or we're going to have a simple function. Uh, our first function should be simple. Now functions are uh, a little different. Um, they're similar, if you look at them, to events, right? So it's kind of like an event happens, you run this code. An event happens, you run this code. Um, the thing that makes functions different is that the event is when you call it, right? And so right here, uh, if touching butterfly, then, uh, and so right here, I want to call this function. And so you can see that now I've got this uh, block over here that I can add, uh, and I can add it right here. So this is, if I'm touching the butterfly, then handle the hit. And so what this does is this lets me put code over here uh, that's basically as if it was all right in here, just like smooshed up. Uh, so it's really kind of neat. Now what I want to do when I handle the hit, 
Uh, that, that's, that's the real question. So I'm already deleting the clone. That's fine. What I want to do is I want to change my number of butterflies. Uh, so let's just do something uh, that's really simple. Let's just do if the costume is number one, uh, we'll, what, what's the order of the costumes? If the costume is number one, we'll divide by two. I guess that's not really a great thing to do first, but that's what we'll, that's what we'll do. And then we'll, we'll add the others in a little bit. All right, so here in the code. So there's a hit. If it's, so I'm going to say if, if my current costume is number one, then I'm going to do something related to that. So if, um, I'm going to check for equality here. So this is an operator. I love the way Scratch works of, of trying to find these things. So if something is equal to something, uh, and so what I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for looks. This is a built-in variable. Uh, costume, costume number. I think this is pretty cool that you can do this. So if the costume number is number one, uh, then what I want to do is I want to set uh, the number of butterflies to something, right? So inside variables, uh, find set butterflies. Now I could uh, very cleverly try to use change, but I'm just going to use set. So I'm going to set butterflies equal to something. And this first costume, if we look at it, it's dividing by two. So what I want to do is I don't want to set it to zero. I want to set it to something here that divides it by two. And so operator says all these different operators. Division uh, is actually this one here. Now, some people, depending on uh, how much you've done in school, they expect to see a division symbol like we put here, this little like division symbol there. Uh, but this slash is also used as a division symbol. I'm guessing most people know that. But what I want to do is I want to set butterflies equal to butterflies divided by two. My program is not even close to done yet, uh, but I want to run it. Now, it's always important uh, to think about what's going to happen when you run it. So when I run it right now, it got reset to 10. Now, if I catch most balloons, they don't, they don't do squat, right? There's only one balloon that's going to do anything. Um, and so think about if you know what balloon it is I'm waiting for and what's going to happen when I hit that balloon. Here it comes. Divide by two should, sure enough, divide it by two. So we've got one balloon done. Oh, and we're going to see what happens if I divide by two again. It goes to two and a half. Great. Now I could really check your math skills and see how long you could play this game for. Oh, there's a divide by two over here. Down by 1.25. And then after that, it's going to start getting ugly. I'm going to stop the video so that we don't make it all about math. So we did costume number one together. If you have identified the pattern, see if you can figure out how to do the rest of them. And what I recommend you do is I recommend that you uh, probably duplicate uh, just because I think that's faster. But if you, if you think you've got it, see if you can pause the video and there's going to be five of statements total. See if you can do a couple of them. So uh, pause the video and see if you can. All right. I'm guessing they paused. All right. So welcome back. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off just by duplicating this one uh, until I got five of them. I could have done that a little faster by duplicating two once I had two, but that's right. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to change this. If it's costume number one, do that. If it's costume number two, I want to do something different. Three, do something different. Four, do something different. Five, do something different. Now the thing that I want to do different is this like inside. Uh, I want to kind of like change this. So I'm going to pull out butterflies divided by two. Uh, and I'm going to replace it with something different. So costume number two. Costume number two is supposed to do a minus eight. So if costume number is equal to two, then I want to do a minus right here. So I go into operators. And this one is a minus sign. So I'll do butterflies minus eight. Bob, do you remember the next on your head? Was it minus four? Yeah, you put them in order of uh, <laughs> yeah. how, how good they were. And so after minus eight was minus four. Oops, I messed that was up. the last of our red bubbles. That was our wasp. And so yeah, costume number equals three, and then we're going to subtract four. four. 
And then the costume number was four. That's actually when we hit the milkweed and we add four. I so we're going to find plus. the plus operator and throw butterflies in there and add four. By the way, moving around, uh, this is one place where text is almost better. Moving these around, it's very easy to like accidentally like put it on top of it instead of putting it in the circle. They're all There's all kinds of little things that you can do to get wrong. I could talk about every little thing that can go wrong, uh, but honestly, you're better off just playing with it. Uh, and then the last one, multiplication. Uh, again, depending on how much math you've had, uh, star is what we use for multiplication. Uh, and so I'm going to take butterflies, star, uh, two. <laughs> Interesting little math questions. Some of these, the order matters and some doesn't. Uh, so for example, I could do two times butterflies or I could do butterflies times two. I could do butterflies plus four or four plus butterflies. Think in your head which ones you can, which ones you can flop and which ones you can't. There's no need to ask Bob that Bob, Bob knows. Which ones can you uh, not flop, Bob? Well, you can't flop division. If you try to flop yeah, division, flop and division would be the bad. opposite problem. And if you try to flop uh, minus, you're going to run yeah. into problem. So it's kind of neat. You can flop all the good ones, but you can't flop the bad ones. That's kind of neat. All right, One so of the I, things that I just ran into is on my screen, the font of these operators was very small. And so as I was <laughs> testing, I was finding that I was multiplying by eight, multiplying by four for all these bad things. And I ended up with a score of about six million. So nice. um, you want to make sure that you're doing the correct thing. And if you need to zoom in to see those operators, that's a good thing to do. And the other thing I was going to mention is... Um, it might be a little bit extra. I don't think we did it in our solution, Dave, but I noticed as you were going through, we ended up with a a fractional, a a partial butterfly. And I'm wondering oh. if we want to use that round down there for the one operation that might end up oh, that sounds decimal fun. point. So most of these don't involve decimals. Only this division one involves a decimal. And so Bob suggested, uh, I like that, uh, that we round it. So here's what I want to do. I want to put the word round right here. And then I'm going to grab the whole thing, making sure to grab the green and drop it into there. And then I'm going to take the word round and put it back. I like that, Bob. That's clever. So now when I get a divide by two, uh, oops. Ah, I want more divisions. Negative seven. <laughs> negative seven. Okay, cool. So I definitely rounded it, right? So uh, negative or one divided by two is, is a half, and then half rounded comes back up to one. Cool. Yeah, depending like, on your math, you'd recognize that any odd number divided by two would be the ones that would have given us a So this three so. would be a weird one, but yeah, so it rounded. Cool, I like that. That's a good addition. I, I love it. Um, and also, when we were uh, in a short break, you mentioned that you might want to title this. I didn't know if you wanted to do that. Um, oh, yeah, that's a good Untitled point. Untitled 31. Yeah. Untitled 31. Not, not the greatest name. Untitled 31. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to call mine Butterfly Population Growth. Cool. So I'm actually really happy with this game. And we could we could call it done, right? Like, that's what we could do. The only problem is, is it, it doesn't feel like the game has a, a point, right? Like, you... You keep going uh, forever, right? Which which can be fun. You just kind of grow. Uh, but I think the, the final thing that we want to add is some sort of ending, right? And so there's different ways that you can end game. You could end games uh, when you get negatives. So that will actually be one of our ways. If you lose all your butterflies, uh, we're going to make a game in for that. The other way that we're going to make the game end, I think is kind of clever, is you get so many seconds. Uh, and then however many seconds or however many points you get in that number of seconds, uh, it ends the game. And that's a good skill that you can apply to a, a lot of different games. Uh, so let's go over to the butterflies code. And he's going to be the one that checks for, for game over events. Now the butterfly code, I left in kind of this weird spot. I don't know if you remember from doing this earlier, uh, but I was, I was explaining how you could use left and right arrows inside the forever loop, or you could use them uh, as events out here. And uh, as a result, I've already got a forever loop kind of all set to go. So if yours doesn't look like mine, you can go ahead and catch it up to make it look like mine. But what I want to do in the forever uh, and actually use it for is I want to check for my two end games. So I'm going to go into control. I'm going to add an if statement. Uh, this one's going to somehow be related to winning. Uh, and then I'm going to add an if statement. And this one's going to somehow be related to losing. Now, I think that I might do um, losing first. It doesn't matter. you, you got to do them both. Um, but winning and losing is what's important. 
So losing, what I want to check for is I want to check if butterflies uh, goes negative, right? So if butterflies ever goes negative, then, then the game is over. So what I can do here is operators. Uh, I'm going to grab a less than. So if my number of butterflies, so I got to go to variables to get my butterflies. If my number of butterflies is ever less than zero, uh, then you, lo you lost, right? Um, and so we're just going to say, uh, I like to grab these say hello for two seconds. Um, and I'll just say game over. Uh, and then after I say game over for two seconds, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop all. Now, interestingly, this other if statement isn't done yet, but, but Scratch is very forgiving. It lets me run it. So here I'm at six, and then there I'm at three, then this should now end the game. So it says game over. Now, one thing that's a little annoying, if you if you if you look like really closely, um, it actually kind of keeps running for a couple seconds. So the two seconds that I'm saying game over, they actually keep running. We could fix that with a broadcast event, and we we may or may not do that, but we'll we'll save that to the end, right? But it works, right? So I'm I'm happy that it works. And there's one decision that we made slightly differently in our final solution. I'll let the uh, campers see if they can figure out what, what they might want to do. Um, right now, the game ends uh, not if you get to zero butterflies. And so in theory, you got zero butterflies oh, yeah. flying along, which doesn't <laughs> really make sense. And so you actually have to get to negative one butterflies to lose this game. Um, maybe think about how you would adjust this so that zero actually does lose this game. It's a very subtle change with what Dave has already put into our operator. Um, you've it's, probably had enough time to think about it. And if not, you can pause. Otherwise, I'll let Dave go ahead and share if he wants to make that fix or not. It's hard to hit zero. So, uh, <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna just leave it alone. Uh, but, uh, right. but yeah, if you want to do it, I'm just going to glance at what we did over here. So if you decided you wanted to. Um, we did less than one. Yeah. Less than one. Yeah, if, if you got to zero, that was a loss. And so you had yeah, to I guess that's check true. if you got less yeah. than zero, but if you actually were less than one. All so. right, I I, uh, I rescind <laughs> my choice. You're right, zero, <laughs> zero should be over. All right, let's zero. do let's do the normal, uh, just timer-based, right? And so there's this thing that you, you may not know about uh, called the timer. Uh, and the timer is actually running uh, all the time. So if you hit this check mark, I'm in sensing, by the way, I went to sensing. And then I found this word timer and I hit this check mark beside it. There's actually a timer that's running uh, all the time. It's, it's just already there. It's just that you don't see it running. Now you can decide whether to show it or not. Like that's up to you. But it's always there. And it stops, um, or sorry, it resets when you hit the green flag. It's kind of annoying. It keeps running even when you hit stop. Doesn't it seem like stop should stop it? Anyway, um, if you hit uh, go, it automatically resets the timer. And so that's what we're going to use. We're going to use that timer thing. And so we're going to use one of our operators again. Uh, we're going to use uh, greater than. Now, just to say it, you could use greater than or less than because if you just swap the sides, you can use either one at the time. But I like to, to pick the one that makes the most sense to me at the time. Uh, and so if the timer is greater than and I like to use greater than instead of equality because, like, notice how it's like a crazy decimal. Like, it may not be 30 exactly or 20 exactly, uh, but I want it to, to whatever it's greater than. Now, I'm going to eventually set it to 20. That, like, that's my goal. Um, but for testing, I actually like to test things, like, a little faster. So I'm going to set it to 5. So just, like, 5 seconds. If the timer is greater than 5, then... Um, we're going to say that the game is, is, is done, right? Um, and what we can do is we can say how many butterflies they finished with. We can say, like, um, you finished with... Uh, now, here we've got a problem. How do we put in the number of butterflies? We, we ran into this in the last uh, project, if you remember. It's a little clunky, uh, but there's this operator called join that you can use, which is kind of fun. So uh, I'm actually going to take this you finished with... Uh, and then instead of saying banana, I'm going to go to variables. Uh, I'm doing this kind of fast because you can pause the video if you need, right? Join, you finished with, and notice how I was actually very clever. I put a space right here after the word uh, with. Um, and then I'm going to grab another join. Uh, where was that join at? 
join, 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 where are you? Right here. Uh, and I'm going to drop it in here. And so I'm going to say this part first. So it's a join of a join. You finished with butterflies. And then over here, I'm going to say space butterflies. And that might take them a second to read. So I'm going to say that for five seconds. And then uh, the game is over at that point. So I do want to, after I say that, do a stop all. So control has the stop all command. Right there, perfect. All right, so it's running. Uh, I'm gonna get myself a multiplication by two, so I'm at 20. Uh, and then it says, you finish with 20 butterflies, cool. Now you probably did observe, I found it kind of annoying. I don't know if you did or not. Uh, but after five seconds, it, the game finished, right? So the game's over right now, but the but the they're still falling, right? I don't know why that bugs me, but it does. So so we're gonna fix it, uh, which would be kind of fun. Uh, so how do we? This is just kind of a question. How do we yell at them and say, "Hey, stop!" Right? Like we're just trying to say, "Hey, everybody, stop what you're doing." Uh, and the answer is. Um, Broadcast events. I can't remember if we've done broadcast events or not. Bob, do you know? Did we do broadcast events last time? Uh, in the previous three videos, I am not sure. I okay. don't recall doing a broadcast event. But you, we may have. you may have known about it from scratch or other places, but what we're going to do is whenever we the game ends, before I even say anything, I'm going to broadcast a message. And so right now it says broadcast message one. I could leave it as message one, uh, but I could also rename it if I wanted. I think I will rename it because message one ah, just doesn't really make sense. I'm going to uh, send the message um, game over. Uh, you can do it with a space in here. That's just fine with Scratch. Uh, in some computer programming languages, instead of spaces, they uh, use capital letters like that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you can do it. You can do it however you want. Uh, you can have a capital G. There's no rules about it, right? I'll do it game over, the most English-like uh, of all the options. So I'm going to broadcast game over. Uh, so when you win, I'm going to broadcast game over. I'm also going to broadcast it in this other one as well. And I do it before the say so that they stop uh, right away. So I want to broadcast game over. Cool. And now uh, if I were to run it right now, not much would change. Um, the reason that not much changes is that I show my log and I scream, hey, everybody, the game is over. Um, but but nobody cares. Nobody nobody listens to me, right? That happens at home sometimes, too. Um, and so uh, what we really want to do is we want these guys to listen. So this one uh, controls uh, the all the, the sprites, uh, which is kind of fun. Um, and so they're coming down um, in this forever loop and they're being made in this forever loop. So there's actually two different forever loops that are running. And what we want to do is if we hear somebody yell that, uh, so let's just go to uh, when I receive. So when I receive game over, what I want to do in this event is I want to stop all the other uh, scripts. And so if you go down to control, this is kind of sneaky where it's at. Stop all has this little white arrow next to it. And if you bring this over, I'll zoom in a little here now. Instead of stopping all, one thing you can change this to is you can stop other scripts in the sprite. Uh, this took me a while to find, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but the nice thing about this is that it'll stop the other scripts in the sprite, but it won't stop the whole darn game, right? And so now uh, as I'm playing, if I get a, a times two here, uh, then the moment that the game's the game ends, um, the timer's still running, which that, that irritates me, uh, but everybody else waits for the five seconds uh, before they all before they all go away. So actually, I think I'm pretty happy about that. And so I think the only thing that I really need to do to make my game more fun is to have more than five seconds to play it. Uh, so let's go over to the butterfly uh, and let's change this five to whatever number uh, you prefer. Uh, in the solution, I did 20, so we'll do 20 seconds again. And I find this game is actually one of the more fun to play, uh, just because, like, sometimes you can get some really high scores. Ah, uh, this is going to be terrible. I'll divide, divide. Uh, and then other times you can get some pretty good ones. So I'm at 16 right now. 20, oh yeah, 40. Ah, another divide, divide. 
Um, looks like I'm going to hit about 20. All right, I finished with 20 butterflies. By the way, there's probably some way to hide the timer too, uh, but I'm not, uh, I'm not that worried about it. All right, Bob, you playing yours over there? Uh, I was playing it. I was also looking at the difference between our solution and what we just did. And there was only one subtle thing you did at the end. When our game ended before, all of the things disappeared. Um, after you stopped all the sprites, you did a delete this clone. Um, and that was only noteworthy because when you changed, this is subtle, I don't know if people caught it. When you had to stop all, you can see it um, in what you have on your screen right now, it has a flat bottom. You can't add anything after stop all because stop all ends everything in your game. There's nothing else to do once you've stopped everything. And so Scratch says, nope, nothing's going to ever come after this. But when Dave changed it, if he goes over when he's done with this game, I don't want to interrupt him. <laughs> when he changed it to stop other scripts in the sprite, the little knot showed up at the bottom of stop that allowed something else to follow it. And so, you know, if he changes it back to stop all, you'll see it's flat. And that's basically uh, Scratch saying, yeah, nothing could ever follow this. Why would you ever need to? Um, but in this case, you could stop the other scripts in the sprite and then still do one last thing if you want. For example, you could delete the clone so it doesn't appear anymore or, or whatever, uh, whatever you might want to do. So, uh, certainly, um, well outside the scope of what had to be noticed or understood to run this, but, uh, I noticed it. So I thought I'd share. Cool. Speaking of the word share, that's the last thing I always like to do. I like to click on share. That'll make a public page for you. Uh, you can add instructions uh, if you'd like. Uh, and then the most important thing is that this URL right here, if you uh, copy this and make an email to, to grandmother, grandfather, or other friends, uh, it's really good to, uh, to share your projects, uh, let other people play it. Um, and you should probably add some instructions as well. Uh, great. So that is the, uh, the end of this one. Uh, hopefully some, uh, some types of things you were thinking about is that with coding, uh, you can make all kinds of different projects. There's just so many uh, creative things that you can do. In this camp, we did four different projects uh, this year. And you can see just the, the wide range of things we did with just four projects. Um, and so uh, there's skills that you picked up, like cloning and variables and broadcast events we just did, uh, and, and so many other uh, things. So uh, butterflies are important. Uh, sustainable environments are important. Uh, and coding is super fun. Bob, do you have any closing words of wisdom? Uh, I don't know how wise they are, but I'll just thank everybody who got through to the end of the fourth video. We really enjoyed the opportunity to share Scratch with you. If you're a, a you know a student, a child, someone who's learning coding for the first time, hopefully this was a good exposure to what coding can be uh, in a very fun and friendly way. Um, we hope that the theme of sustainability uh, enhanced your learning maybe about our, our ecosystem a little bit and then got your mind thinking about ways that you can help your environment. And if you are thinking about other ways that you can get involved with coding, Scratch is a fantastic environment for you to just take these starters that we provided for you and build on them. Build on them yourself. Think about ways that you can uh, create games. You know, every one of these games that you saw us create started as an idea that one of us had. And then we just started putting some code around it and started doing things. And, you know, as we thought about things, we're like, oh, it'd be great if this moved this way, or we limited that, or we had an end to our game, or we had a celebration at the end. And, you know, adding these things to the game can uh, you can start with the starting point that we provided or you can just try to create something on your own so if you fell in love with this if this was exciting to you um, keep at it because uh, that's how you get good at things and also if you're ever looking for for more videos like this is going to be the the 2023 videos right they're not uh, they're not up yet with the time we're filming this uh, but we do have previous years up here uh, and so ever since covid hit uh, we started filming these and uh, putting these things on the internet. So if you ever want to go look at another one, this is just the connectingwithcode.org site, uh, and then you can go to uh, some other year. All right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, have fun with your code. Uh, look forward to seeing you again next year. Uh, thanks for being part of the system. Bye. Mm -hmm.